is there any all ireland that really really sticks out because of the explosion of joy the ending of a famine is there any all ireland that was like kind of struck you that mm -hmm. this meant so much to them well i i the i the awfully hardly i think the story of awfully hardly to me uh it's a miracle if you look at their record before 1980, when they were first Leinster in 1980, mm -hmm. they had played in the Leinster final of 1969. And I think you'd go a hell of a long way to find them in the Leinster final before that, maybe around 1928 mm. or something. It was doldrums for most of their existence. It was, but the hope was always there. Mm. And I remember being at the semi-finals that year now. Kilkenny were all Ireland champions, as they often are. And uh, they had a mighty game with Wexford. Kilkenny and Wexford used to be a great game that day. Mm. And awfully beat Leash. Now, I happened to call out to the hospital in Adelaide Road that night to visit somebody. And I met two of the awfully hurlers inside. Paddy Delaney was one of them and I think Kennedy, Mick Kennedy was a priest, is a priest. He was there and there was a third there. And you wouldn't talk or yeah. And I started talking all the time about the great game between Wexford and Ireland. And after a while Paddy Delaney said to me, did you see us at all? <laughs> <laughs> he was a great role, you know. And I said, I didn't really because I had to be searching out for the teams that would line out in the second half. And he said then, and I thought again, it was a joke, don't write us off for the Leinster final. Now, I was broadcasting that Leinster final. Only 8,000 and a few hundred turned up for an event that usually attracted Kilkenny Wexford would always have at least 30,000. Mm. The Olympic Games were on in Moscow and people stayed at home to watch the games. But uh, it was a great game of hurling and it was won in the end by Offaly. Now that was to me a miracle. Not alone that then, but the aftermath. There was 20 years left in this century. They played in 11 consecutive Leinster finals. That was another mini miracle. Mm. They won seven of them. For a county that hadn't won any, they won seven of the 11, and Wexford and Kilkenny were good that time, and Dublin used to be too bad at times. And in that spell, they won four all Ireland. Now, that was very impressive. Now, it is a pity that they have gone back down, and I hope they come again, but they have a, a good explanation. They no longer have a young population. At that time, Bordnamone was a big thing. Mm. There was a lot of ESB employment there as well. But those things have been receding ever since, you know, and nearly gone. So they no longer have a young generation. But I hope they'll come again. Now, occasions like that, you know, I, I like them to say, I would love now to see Mayo win in all Ireland. They deserved one, but... <laughs> There's no, no certificate or anything going with, with losing one. And uh, it was great when Donegal won. Mm. First time ever. They hadn't won many Lens Ulsters. They won their first, I think, 1972 around then. And they were never, and uh, there was a joke around Kerry for a while, you know, long before that. Uh, Dingle fishermen used to go all the way up the western coast and they knew the fishermen of Killybegs and all those. And um, there's a story that's always told around Dingle that somebody asked Paddy Barn Brosnan, he was a Kerry footballer, he was a fisherman, strong as three horses put together, you know. Somebody asked him, what's it like now to, when you're getting the San Maguire? If we ever get it, what will we do? Well, have your hand out to shake hands with the Queen. We've no Queen here. Yeah. You will by the time ye <laughs> win and all that. <laughs> <laughs> there was that, but there were a good relationship between mm. Kerry and Donegal, the, the relation of the sea. Now, they won 
uh, they won in 1992. Down had won in 1991. And I was up a few of their games. I knew a lot of them. A lot of them used to play in different clubs and come out the spell in the Gael Giggers. We miss you kind Gael Martin McHugh and the brother of us uh, on Cup Day and the whole lot of them. And I went up as I often did when they had reached the final. I would go to the county. Especially if it was a county that would never be for it. To soak it in? Pardon? Just to soak it in? The atmosphere Just to look. see, I believed, in, in seeing and listening and looking yourself. And I left very, you know, late, maybe on a Monday evening. Settled in somewhere. And it was a lovely morning, the Tuesday. And I had the golf clubs in the car. I keep them in the car always. They're good to balance the car, you know. And <laughs> they go right across. <laughs> so it was a lovely morning, and I hit down to the, the golf club of Nairn and Port New. Lovely place, really. Went into the bar, and there were three people inside, talking about the match. And one or two of them knew me, and they knew that Kerry had won all that. And they started bamboozling me with questions. What's it like when you see your county run out onto the field? And a whole lot of questions. We decided to go playing golf. And right through the game, it was question after question. They were really in a final, and that was huge. But they had no knowledge of what happens in the next bit. What's it like when you see your team, green and gold, running out onto the field? And I was toning everything down a little bit because I thought they had no hope of beating mm. Dublin, really. Dublin, that was the year after the year of the great four matches with me. And Dublin were a lot better the following year. But anyway, we finished the round, we did drop a tea, and I was heading off. So it's a, Ta mission is to do the good over, good in good to to get them a kind in children. And I shook hands with them. And as I shook hands with the last, then one of them said, "I suppose the four of us will never again meet." And I said, "If Donegal win on Sunday, I'll be back here at ten o'clock on Tuesday morning, and I want the three of you here." And I, we shook hands again. <laughs> yeah. And I headed off for the door, saying to myself, I wouldn't say it to anyone else, the four of us will never again meet. But as it turned out, I was broadcasting the game, and it was a most enjoyable game, and they won it, playing good football. They won it. And then I was looking forward to meeting those, but late on the Sunday night, I went out to Malahide, the Grand Hotel in Malahide, that's where, where they were um, celebrating. And it was thronged, as you can imagine. Yeah. First ever win, of course. Donegal people came from everywhere, and why wouldn't they be delighted, singing the lot? And I was walking up the middle of the hall late at night. I wanted to meet those of them I didn't meet after the game. And halfway up the hall, I got a little tip on the shoulder, turned around, and here was one of the three I had met <laughs> the previous Tuesday. And he was attempting to say something. And there was a lot of noise into his hat, and I eventually picked up what he was trying to say was, could you ever make it 12 o'clock? If you enjoyed this piece of content, please follow us on YouTube by hitting the subscribe button in the bottom right-hand corner of the page, which helps the channel grow. And if you want audio podcasts, go to patreon.com forward slash our game.